Okay. Uh, one of the aspects that we had discussed today in class dealt with chapter 10, which was protein synthesis. So what that entails is taking directions from the nucleus, okay, and taking that in the form of a message of messenger RNA and going to the ribosome where amino acids are physically picked up and aligned in a specific order that again is determined by what's in the nucleus or the DNA. Okay, so one of the things we had also discussed was some structural differences between the two. So if we're looking at this as DNA, okay, one of the things that we know is different with that is it's a, a double helix in, in shape, okay, and, or double stranded, double helix, whichever term you feel most comfortable in using. And it also has thymine and instead of uracil, and it's found only in the nucleus. Okay, so if we have these base pairings here, we have G, G, C, T, T, G, T, A, G, and C, C, T. Okay, so that's one half of a strand of DNA that's again found only in the nucleus. So if we look at it in this fashion, the complementary base pairings of these individual nucleotides that make up DNA would then be as follows. Be, of course, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, adenine, adenine, cytosine, adenine, and of course, and so on and so forth. We don't need to be reading these uh, out loud. Okay, so again, each individual letter is a nucleotide and we know that this is DNA because one it's only found in the nucleus it's double stranded or double helix and it's got thymine in it so a different form of nucleic acids is what we call ribonucleic acid or RNA and how we had described that is in the nucleus the messenger RNA Not R A A. R N A. Okay. So what we see happening is the messenger RNA comes in here and reads the directions on the DNA. So we've got guanine, guanine. And again, we don't need to be reading these off because we are responsible for knowing that adenine bonds with thymine and DNA and cytosine bonds with guanine. That's the same in messenger RNA except where we see adenine is going to bond to uracil instead. But the adenine still bonds to thymine in the DNA. Okay, now what we see happening here is this messenger RNA is reading the directions of the template here on the DNA. And each specific three letter codes on messenger RNA are called codons. Okay? Because these code for the specific amino acids. Because as we have discussed before, that amino acids are the building blocks for proteins. So, once this has finished, okay, once the messenger RNA has completed its process of transcription, okay, it's transcribing, it's reading the instructions. These three letter bases of messenger RNA, again, are called codons. And this is one of the things that we had done before, is you'll be responsible for naming these specific amino acids that, that the DNA codes for. Okay, so 
what we see here is G, G, and C. So again, how we read this, we go down, this is your first base, then your second base goes across the top, and then the third base down here. So, as we see this, we find the box G. Here it is. Then we go across the top where we find G and see where that coincides with the third one, and we see that is glycine. Okay? So G and G and G down here. We see that we've got glycine. Okay? Then the next one, U, U, G. Here we have U. We go across where U is here, and now we have phenylalanine. U, U, G. Excuse me, not phenylalanine. Leucine is right below it. And then we have U, A, G. So U, go across, A, and then down here for G, it's U, A, G. It's a stop codon. So in other words, transcription would stop once it reaches this. Okay, so again, these are the codons that specify for specific amino acids because once this stops, this is a stop codon, transcription stops, this then leaves the nucleus and heads for the ribosome. And once it is there, remember, this is messenger RNA. And we have GGC and UUG and, and UAG. And we could go on further, but remember that was a stop codon. So three letter bases of messenger RNA are called codons where a third type or transfer RNA will physically pick up these amino acids that is coded for. So in this case we'll just put some random ones up here so we can put them in in, in order then. So those are three different amino acids that physically get picked up by transfer RNA. It picks up that amino acid and assembles it in this specific order. Okay. Again, codons, these are what we call anti-codons. So I'll let you take a minute, or not a minute, but just a few seconds to see which one would go with which. In other words, we'll say just in this order. This one's number one, this one's number two, this one's number three. So of number one, number two, or number three, which anticodon matches with that codon? So again, I'll give you uh, a few seconds to, to put them together. So number two goes first, CCG, because it's complementary to guanine. Again, anticodons, codons. So that one is taken care of. Then it's either number one or number three is next. Well, what bonds to uracil is going to be adenine, so AAC is next. And again, these are anticodons. Now we've taken care of that one. Now finally we've got A, U, and C. Okay. So, codon and anticodon. Okay, and again, that was from chapter 10 dealing with protein synthesis. So we're going to want to be able to, uh, and we did this in a diagram where you take instructions. This is your DNA and in the form of a message or messenger RNA reads the instructions, heads to the ribosome with these specific codons, 
coding for a very specific amino acid in the form of anticodons that physically pick up that amino acid. And should something change, in other words, notice that this was supposed to be the arrangements of the, of the code, if this gets changed by one letter, we change that C to maybe a T instead. And when that happens, if it only takes place in one spot, we would call that not just only a mutation, okay? So a change in the, the directions of DNA is called a mutation, okay? The change of one nucleotide in the directions of DNA is occurring at one spot or one point, therefore making that a point mutation. And then finally, if we have a whole group of these, then we'd call that a frame shift mutation. Those were uh, sorted vocab terms that you were responsible for. So don't forget, we've got multiple choice questions from chapters 8, 9, and 10, and vocabulary from chapters 8, 9, 10 and this information because this is pertinent to chapter 10 it's what you had chose last Friday to do just those assorted chapters and then finally uh, we'll talk about a genetics cross or problem associated with uh, genetics tomorrow okay so if you have any questions please get in and talk to myself you Please take that initiative, okay, because this is a, a big, big evaluation because, as you know, it is 20% of your grade. Okay, so again, any questions, please get in and talk to me. We will catch up to you next time.